1993, another piece of technology called CRISPR was created and afterward immediately used to develop dangerous experiments. In the present day, aboard a space station, a lab rat has been mutated with CRISPR and has wiped out the entire crew. Dr. Carrie Atkins is the sole survivor, and she is contacting the heads at Energene, the ones who developed the CRISPR mutagen, to help her return. Energine's CEO Claire Wyden orders Carrie to bring back the mutagen samples or do not return at all. Carrie goes back for the samples, and the rat monster chases her. She makes it to the escape pod and is released as the station blows up with the rat still inside. But the damage to the pod causes it to break open, depressurize, and explode, killing Carrie. The samples themselves fly away across the country. At an animal sanctuary in San Diego, primatologist Davis Okoye leads co-workers Nelson, Connor, and Amy to an ape-fenced-in area. They notice an ape named Pavo, who endeavors to track down a female ape to mate with. However, Davis separates them. Pavo is disturbed until Davis talks him down tenderly. All of a sudden, a pale-skinned person, gorilla named George, comes running in, which prompts Connor freaking out and disturbing Pavo, who pursues Connor, until George pushes him over. George alarms Pavo until Davis converses with him, too. George ends up being playful, and Davis thinks of him as his best friend. After work, Amy attempts to welcome Davis out for drinks. However, he benevolently turns her down. Nelson then moves toward him and inquires as to why he is nearer to animals than he is with people. Davis says, the animals simply get him. That evening, the mutagen samples begin to land. One lands in George's enclosure, one more in the forest close to a pack of wolves, and the final remaining one in a waterway in Florida. A lone wolf is splashed with the gas while a crocodile eats the entire sample. And George gets showered with it too. Davis is brought in the following morning to check on George. Nelson lets him know that George is in the grizzly bear enclosure. They track down a dead bear in there and George is hiding in fear. He has a scratch mark on his chest and shows to Davis that the bear went after him first. George ventures out and has now grown up to nine feet tall. News reports of the mutagen hitting the country. Kate Caldwell sees the news on television, as does Claire Wyden and her brother, Brett. Brett is going crazy over how much cash they are losing, while Claire is fulfilled that the mutagen for her Project Rampage experiment is successful. To deal with what could happen next, Claire proposes they enlist a private military team to fix things. Kate goes to the animal sanctuary to attempt to converse with Davis about what has occurred, as she claims to work for Energene and is responsible for developing the mutagen, so she might have the option to prevent George from growing. At the point when they attempt to proceed to find George, he is caged up until he begins to develop more aggressive. He ultimately breaks free from the cage and runs free on the sanctuary, frightening every one of the visitors. Davis pursues him similarly as the police show up. They point their weapons at George until Davis figures out how to talk George down. Things deteriorate as a chopper soars over and begins hitting George with sedative darts until he drops. In Wyoming, the military group, led by Burke, heads into the woods to recover the mutagen sample. Burke contacts the Widens and tell them that the container is empty. As the group moves further into the forest, they find dead wolves spread out across the ground, as well as a huge paw print in the ground. They are then found and attacked by the mutated wolf as he goes through the forest. The group takes shots at him. However, their efforts are vain as the wolf takes them out one by one until only Burke remains. He calls the chopper to take shots at the wolf. However, the wolf jumps out of the trees and wrecks the chopper, making it crash down into the lake. Burke is then cornered by the wolf, and he attempts to take one final stand, however, the wolf eat him. A government agent named Harvey Russell shows up at the sanctuary to bring George into a plane to keep him contained from the public. Davis and Kate are brought in to be interrogated too. Davis contends that having George on the plane is self-destruction, However, Russell thinks they have everything taken care of. In the air, Russell reveals, after looking through Davis and Kate's records, 
that Kate had been terminated from Energene after attempting to steal research from the labs for which she served 13 months in jail. This leads Davis to acknowledge she was lying and that she cannot fix George. Subsequent to learning of the wolf incident, Claren acts a radio frequency that calls to the mutated animals. The wolf and the crocodile advance toward Chicago, where Energene is found. George, notwithstanding being kept calmed, figures out how to hear the frequency also, and he begins to awake up. He goes into full fury mode and breaks the cage down. He goes after the agents as Davis attempts to protect himself and Kate. George nearly kills Russell until Davis intercedes, and George simply knocks Russell out. The plane's turbine explodes, and it begins to head down. Davis straps parachutes onto himself, Kate, and Russell, and they eject themselves from the plane as it crashes to the ground. The three land and see that George survived the crash and is advancing toward the city. Davis clarifies that he has no faith in Kate after what he's found out about her. He makes sense of that. While she was working for Energene, her brother was stricken with disease and she trusted that CRISPR could fix him. Until she discovered that Claire had been utilizing CRISPR to develop dangerous weapons. Kate attempted to make off with it, however, was caught and jailed. Davis then, at that point, tells her how he found George. Poachers got his mom, and a terrified youthful George was hiding under the poacher's truck. Davis and his group recovered him and killed the poachers as they had first shot at them. Russell awakens and is grateful to Davis for saving his life, so he decides to help him and Kate. Davis, Kate, and Russell meet with a military team that is keeping surveillance on George and the wolf as they head into Chicago. They understand the creatures are being called into the city and that they should figure out how to contain them. Russell assists Davis and Kate with taking a chopper and make their way into the city. The ape wolf and the crocodile show up in the city, leading to an all-out rampage. Davis and Kate show up as the monsters begin destroying the city. Realizing it's basically impossible that they'll have the option to stop them all alone, they head to Energine to find the antidote that can stop them. Davis handles the chopper, and they run into the building in the midst of the chaos. They find the lab with the antidote, yet the Widens find them first, and Brett holds them at gunpoint. Claire tells the two that the antidote won't make the creatures returns to normal, yet it will just eliminate their heightened aggressions. She takes the gun and fires Davis in the midsection prior to taking Kate with her. The Widens attempts to board their own chopper and grab their materials and Kate, yet the monsters start advancing up the tower. George comes to the top and crushes the chopper, driving Brett to run away. Davis shows up in the wake of surviving the shot, and he saves Kate, yet Claire is forcing them to help her. Instead, Davis diverts George long enough for Kate to take a vial of the antidote that she recovered and place it in Claire's bag. Kate punches Claire and pushes her into George's way, so he gets Claire and eats her alongside the antidote. Meanwhile, Brett is practically out the door when he goes over Russell, who some way or another made it rapidly into the city. He orders Brett to give up the laptop containing his research so he can be free. Brett happily obliges and runs out the door, only to get messily splattered by a piece of falling debris. Davis and Kate wait that the antidote to take effect as George keeps on annihilating, while the wolf and the crocodile come to the top too. Davis and Kate board the Widen's chopper so they can get sufficient air to keep away from any serious harm. The beasts all cause the tower to collapse and go crashing down. Davis and Kate survive, and George rises out of the rubble, now back to his old self. In any case, the wolf and the crocodile are as yet rampaging, so Davis and George choose now is the right time to stop this. It also turns out that the military is attempting to send off an airstrike to take out the beasts, so Kate joins Russell in attempting to call it off. George fights the wolf and the crocodile. He throws the wolf around however the wolf can fly and shoot quills, while the crocodile is the biggest of all and is near indestructible. Davis fools the wolf into gliding toward him, just for Davis to move and allow the wolf to fly into the crocodile's way. The crocodile snatches the wolf by the throat and bites his head off, swallowing it. George attempts to pound the crocodile, yet it is too strong, and throws George against a shaft that pierces him. 
Davis tosses an explosive belt at the croc's neck, and furthermore, has also tried utilizing the chopper's artillery to bring the crocs down. Yet it scarcely scratches her. The crocodile pursues Davis and almost eats him until George jumps very high with the post, and he slams it into the croc's eye and runs it through her head, at long last killing her. In the wake of seeing all that happened, the military colonel cancels the strike. George seems debilitated from his injury and apparently dies, just to uncover he was simply playing with Davis. The heroes begin to leave the city as they wonder where George's new home will be. Please, like and subscribe. Watch now more of my videos. Thank you!